Well, hello everybody. Happy Tuesday to all. Um, what we're going, I'm Matt Williamson, by the way. I figured you already know that by now. But what I'm doing today is we'll get back to the Steelers in no time. Don't get me wrong. But I want to give you my take on the three divisional drafts. You know, the Ravens, Brownies, and of course the Bungles. Um, before we do, and I, I think when you evaluate any draft right after, you can't just be like, this draft was terrible because they didn't have any picks. You know, everyone gets dealt or everyone comes to the, the poker table with different cards. And the Steelers had the nicest cards before the draft of any of these three teams as we, or any of these four teams as we laid out. So they should have the best draft. You know, I mean, we talked about draft capital last week that Steelers had the best draft capital, you know, just numbers on a page, no names on them yet. So they should have the best draft. Okay, cool. You know, the, you know the, the Brownies didn't have a pick for a while. The Bengals, as usual, never move and just have their picks and take the same pick every year. And the Ravens, unlike usual, were very short on picks. They usually make 10, 12 picks because they're the comp pick masters. Well, this year, not so much. And they gave up a second round pick for Roquan Smith. But I still think the Steelers got better way more than any of the other teams in the division. And... I like their picks. I think they played their cards better too. You know, yes, they got nicer cards in their hand, but they played the hand better than the other teams as well as maximizing the cards they had. So in terms of draft hall, Steelers are definitely one, in my opinion, in the AFC North. So that's good news. Um, let's talk about the Ravens. So, as I mentioned, they didn't have a second round pick. They only made seven picks, very unlike them. We talked about, you know, prospects coming in. And besides Jackson Smith and the Jigba, Zay Flowers was my favorite receiver in this draft. He was my number two ranked receiver for any generic team, you know. I don't know if he'd be number two if I were the Ravens, though. Um, again, I love the player. Lamar's back. I think Todd Monken as offensive coordinator is going to pay off for them and the offense is going to look noticeably different. And this pick in the signing of Odell implies that they are going to be much more traditional, throw the ball to wide receivers. Crazy. Maybe they'll even throw it to running backs. Even crazier. But outside the numbers. I mean, Lamar is most comfortable and has had most of his success throwing to big people in the middle of the field. Zay Flowers is not a big person. Sure, he'll do in-breaking routes, but he's, I don't say a jitterbug, he's a traditional receiver. I mean, he's a normal wide receiver, but he's small. Will Lamar have success throwing more traditional routes, outs, comebacks, things like that? I think he's a better passer than everyone tends to give him credit for, especially around here. But little receivers in this offense, and I just said the offense is going to be different, don't quite fit in because they don't block anybody. You know, Marquise Brown is in Arizona now because he was little and didn't block anybody. So I like Flowers. He's a little more physical than you would think. He's short, but he's not a skinny guy. Um, but the fit is a little worrisome to me. Are, are you just trying to appease Lamar with this Odell and Zay pickup to make him happy? Which there's nothing wrong with that, to be honest with you. But uh, there you have it. Well, didn't have a second round pick. Steeler Nation went crazy. Oh, my gosh. The Ravens got Trenton Simpson at the 86 pick. They always get the good guys. You know, maybe. He's a tremendous athlete. And it looks like they're not going to pick up Patrick Queen's fifth-year option. That deadline is today. Um, so, they got one more year of Queen. And then Simpson will be the successor next to Roquan, which financially makes sense. You can't have that much invested in two linebackers. That's fine. I mean, that's a good succession plan. Great show, by the way, um, because Simpson needs a year. He really does. He's a tremendous athlete. I hate the term instincts, but I'm going to use it here anywhere. Anyway, they're really bad. I mean, he misreads stuff and runs the wrong way a lot, and he really doesn't make that many plays, but they don't might not need him to for a year. So if next year he's a plug and play guy after he learns, great. They may hit something there, but in the meantime, I think he's a special teamer slash learner. Way too early for Tavius Robinson, a defensive end from Mississippi, but their edge pass rush is worrisome. Um, the biggest needs for me were wide receiver and corner. They waited till the 157th pick to take Caillou Blue Kelly, a player I like. Uh, you know, I had him linked to the Steelers, but I would have liked to seen them address corner earlier. I, I think they're very light at corner. 
Um, then they took a, a two linemen, but one of them I think is noteworthy is Andrew Voorhees. They took him in the seventh round. He's the dude that blew out his knee at the combine and then went and did the bench. Good for him. I'm an easy guy to root for, but he is not going to play all year. He's a pure guard that probably is a third rounder. Maybe that's being kind to the young man. Certainly in the fourth round, if he would have been clean, he may be a starting guard, but starting next year. He's a total red shirt guy, but worth it for a seventh round pick. I got no problem with that. All right, we'll take a quick break and then we'll talk about the Ohio teams. All right, Cincy Bengals. Now, I can't remember if we've had this conversation or not, but if you looked at team needs across the internet for the Bengals, they need another tackle, they need a tight end, you know, maybe a running back. Joe Mixon might not be back, you know. So they went defense, defense, defense. Well, I saw this coming and this is why. So their team building, if you look at their defense, Mike Hilton's a great example, Steeler fans, they went and paid for their defense. DJ Reader, Hendrickson, a lot of, and to their credit, they didn't use to spend, a lot of spending on defense from outside the organization and drafting offense, Burrow, Higgins, Chase, et cetera. Now that has to change because when you pay Burrow and Chase and hopefully Higgins for them, your offense is going to, and they already paid the left tackle, Brown, Orlando Brown, your money's going to be on offense like immediately. So you need to draft defense to keep the thing going. You know, I mean, you need cheap talent on defense now because your offense is about to get extremely expensive, maybe as expensive as any offense in the league. So this made all the sense in the world to me. And you, maybe you looked at the end as not a need, but I think Miles Murphy's much better than the 28th player in this draft. And their four three D ends are always king size dudes. They're always six, five, long arms, Carlos Dunlap. You know, they're always big edge setter types. Murphy fits in perfect. DJ Turner is a corner that's much different than the two the Steelers drafted, but I was very much on my radar. Fastest guy at the combine, but he's not just a track star. He can play inside. He can play out. Not huge, but I think he's a quality pick with the 60th draft choice overall. And corner is a position that they draft high year after year after year. Jordan Battle's a quality safety. Um, they lost both their safeties in free agency. And they drafted Dax Hill from Michigan last year. So I think Hill and Battle will be your cheap safeties that replace Bell and Bates. You yeah, know, adds up. Rest of the draft doesn't do a lot for me. But Charlie Jones is a quality slot player out of Purdue. I think Tyler Boyd's going to be a casualty you know, when you all that about getting super expensive on offense, I think that's going to come at the expense of Tyler Boyd sooner or later. You know, can you pay a third receiver that much? Probably not. And he's the oldest of the group. So I think he, Jones will be your new Tyler Boyd probably a year from now. A lot of people like Chase Brown more than I do. Um, he's easy to root for. He's tough as can be. He's rocked up. His brother is a good safety in this uh, his twin brother in this class. I just think he's just is what he is, hits a hole hard, drags tacklers, just doesn't have a lot of juice or a lot of agility, but they needed a back in a bad way. I mean, Mixon, I assume they'll run him into the ground and send him on his way. P. Ryan's gone. So that running back depth chart was really worrisome. So Brown goes into a, a good spot. Uh, Iovasis, I kill his name, sorry, is the, the tall Princeton receiver. Um, he needs work, but he's also a special teamer in the meantime. A little different. I mean, he's more T. Higgins than anyone else on their list, but he's a speedster. Um, he's faster than Higgins. Higgins does more of the dirty work than this guy. But I would imagine he's just insurance, you know, a down the field, you know, uh, deep threat, you know, with, with size and speed that has a lot of work to do, but maybe sees the field in the meantime for special teams. Speaking of special teams, they also took a punter from Michigan, Brad Robbins. So be it. A lot of kickers and punters draft in this in this draft, which is really just a salary cap move. You know, I don't want to pay a kicker or punter. I'm just going to draft one and see how that goes. Now, um, the Brownies. The Brownies didn't have much in the way of draft capital. It's all tied up in Deshaun Watson 
and Brandon Cooks. You know, so remember that Brandon Cooks was kind of part of this haul as well. They swapped some picks. And their first pick was also a receiver too. So I've been telling you for a while, the Browns offense is going to look different too. It's going to be Watson in the shotgun, much more Deshaun-centric than Chubb-centric. They're going to throw the ball around, spread the field a little bit more, more Clemson than we've seen you know, in the Browns lately. So good. Okay. You got, now you have Cooper, Njoku, Elijah Moore. I I said Cooks. I'm sorry. Cooks went to the Cowboys. I'm talking about Elijah Moore, my fault. Uh, Elijah Moore and Tillman. And Tillman's a receiver I like quite a bit. He's a big physical dude, probably a power slot, um, different than the receivers they have. You get to space out the the age of those dudes pretty well as, as well. So I like this pick quite a bit. And frankly, besides the Steelers, I thought the Browns played the cards they were dealt the best of the other three teams. Now, I'm not saying they got the best haul. They didn't pick till 74 overall. They don't have a first-round pick next year. But I thought they did the most with what they had, you know, in terms of the guys they selected. It's starting with Tillman, who I think is going to be a quality number two, middle of the field, not super dynamic, chain-moving wide receiver. Good. Their defensive tackle room in Cleveland was as bad as any position group in the league. And I thought they overspent for Tomlinson, a big nose that can also get up field. So I get the Ica pick as well um, from Baylor. He's a huge nose. Throwback, five, ten, well, ten years ago. Ten years ago, he's probably a top 50 pick. He's just a big space-eating type of dude that doesn't offer much to pass rush. He's not going to turn into Vita Vea, you know, but he's not a stiff either. But their linebackers are very thin. Well, they're lean. Thin might not be the right word. Lean, small, fast linebackers. So they got better at linebacker by not drafting a linebacker, but by drafting a nose. So two big, beefy defensive tackles get added to the roster. Those guys should be able to run and hit on the second level better on early downs in particular. Speaking of beef, I mean, the, the wild card of the draft for the Browns is, is Dewan Jones from Ohio State. Now, on his best days, he's more than a starting tackle. He's got a chance to be a really good player. Um, there's lots of concerns about his weight slash motivation, though. So that's a hard thing for me to comment on. But when you look at the draft and be like, how did that giant human being with good tape fall to 111? A lot of people just don't think that he loves the game or is all that motivated. Who knows? I mean, again, that's the wild card of their draft. If they hit with him, all these things will work itself out. If they didn't, then not a bad crack anyway. I mean, they didn't give up a lot to go get him. Isaiah McGuire's probably not a guy you know a lot about. He's a quality pick at this stage. He was a fourth rounder. The thing you're going to hear about, if well, I don't know if everyone will catch on to this, but Broderick Jones' worst game last year came against Isaiah McGuire from Missouri. Anyway, okay. You know, they'll play against each other twice a year. I don't even know if he'll line up against Jones, whatever. I don't know that he has his number, but I thought it was noteworthy. We're talking Steelers here. I think he'll be in a rotation with Oconquo, uh, a free agent signing that I like quite a bit. They'll be opposite Garrett. He's their third end, fits in well. Uh, I mentioned Watson. They drafted Dorian Tom- Thompson Robinson from UCLA. Um, a lot of experience, similar athlete slash style of play as Watson. They're drafting a backup, which when you have $60 million invested in cap space in your quarterback, you can't go get a Mitch Trubisky at $8 million or whatever. You need a cheap, cheap backup. I think Thompson Robinson fits that mold really well. And then their last two picks were guys, I was a little shocked we're still on the board, Cameron Mitchell. Northwestern. He comes back with uh, Newsom. They were both buddies at Northwestern. More of a slot. They get him with the 142nd pick. I'd be shocked if he busts. I, mean, I think he'll be a, have a quality career. He's not going to Pro Bowls anytime soon. And I don't know if injuries were a play here, but they bring in Luke Whipler, who I thought was the fourth or fifth best center from Ohio State. Maybe he's just Dewan Jones's babysitter. <laughs> you know, hey, hey, Luke, while you're here trying to make the team, Keep an eye on the big fella. Try to get, keep him on the straight and narrow. But you get this guy that late at 190. I looked at him as a potential starting center. They already have Potich. Um, I don't know that Whipler can play guard. But at this late in the draft, uh, getting that name there looked like a good pick to me. 
So that's my take on the AFC North draft. I will be back tomorrow. Um, at this point, if you guys have stuff you want me to talk about, just shoot me a note or at Williamson NFL because news isn't going to be coming left and right like it used to. So content might be a little harder to come by. Uh, fifth year option deadline was today. See how that pans out when it's all said and done. Schedule release is coming next week. So there are, there's always stuff to talk about in the NFL, but if there's something in particular you want, bring it on home and trust me, I'm not done talking to sealer draft class either. So over and out. <laughs>